coming to you live from the cradle of motherfucking civilization. It's time for Destiny Down Under. Of the Destiny Down Under podcast, I as every week I'm Log Power Slave. Nothing's changed on that front. We're joined by Australia's favourite war master, none other than Marlon Games. In particular, like sweet little yeah. fucking like war how, yeah. master. I like how you had to specify a, a country. Well, I had to <laughs> narrow it, it down because if, if it was, was global, globally, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm just trying to throw you a bone, mate. <laughs> no chance. Yeah. My, <laughs> Perth's favourite lawmaster. <laughs> my personal favourite lawmaster uh, because he's on a podcast. My favourite lawmaster on this podcast, Mylan Games. <laughs> Round of applause, everybody. <laughs> Fucking there you go. There you go. Good on you, mate. How you going? <laughs> uh, yeah, look, um, I've been playing a lot of Destiny. I've been doing a lot of PhD work. Um I feel like I'm not progressing in either aspects of my life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess you're on I mean, brand with like the rest of the fucking globe at the moment, though, if that's the case, because pretty much everyone's kind of like, I am not doing much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It feels a bit like that. Um, Danny's been just really stressed, really flat out. She's sort of leading a COVID-19 team in policy and has a lot of responsibilities at the moment. So she's been working, she's going, she's working today, probably working tomorrow. Um, she's been working about nine o'clock at night, every what a night. Champion. From, so if we do stream tomorrow night with a Danny stream, come join and say thanks to her. Cause she's been going crazy. So did she not, has she not but been I mean, keeping up on the news? Cause there's that dude from Florida that someone tweeted at me this morning that uh, I'm pretty sure he's a lawmaker head, in Florida. I'm not sure what his actual job was. Hair dryer. Yeah. Hair dryer up the nose, cure it easy. So, I mean, I did that this morning and I'm just pretty much bulletproof for the old, for the dirty Rona from now on. <laughs> Danny stream, Danny stream. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that shit to Matt's channel. God, no, actually we could probably get Danny on the podcast and it'd be far more informative and good. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not destiny specifically but in general people would probably walk away feeling better about the world <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. but apart from that man i've been you know i had a rough game in trials this oh, rough games and trials it was it was i just wasn't doing well at all but gotta stick at it gotta stick you get, out. i got revoker to? though got revoker. that's the uh the training wheel sniper that's good it's um yeah it's very forgiving yeah. and you'll yeah, do some damage it with it, man. You see it, I mean, you see it yeah. a lot in trials already. I mean, Nick's an absolute fucking beast with it and he kind of uses it yeah. apologetically because it's a little bit one of those sort of fringe meme weapons. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Um, how'd you go? Where'd you get up? Where'd, where'd you get to on your card? Uh, I think we only got up. I don't think we got five wins. So it must have only been four. Okay. It's right. been four. I don't understand that map, man. I can't. I can't seem to get my range on that map at Widows, all. It's I've Widow's probably, Court, right? I haven't yeah. played yet, so I haven't, I haven't had a chance to jump uh, in and play because it's all bedlam here. But it's um, I'm actually looking forward to it because I, I have put heaps more time into my snipe game than I have into my shotgunning game, and I managed to to go yeah. all the way with it last week <laughs> with Maxi and that. So, um, yeah, I'm, I don't know. I'm looking forward to it. But I, I understand that, like, Widow's Court, the second that they announced it, I'm like, people are going to either love this or fucking hate it because it's such a big map, mm -hmm. there's such long lines of sight, and the games will be long. <laughs> yeah, and I'm pretty sure we match the same dudes like, I don't know, three, four times, same guys, and they beat us every time, so they were just farming matches one to three basically yeah well i mean we'll talk about that in a minute but um so that was I, a bit I, shitty we, we just got stomped by them heaps it's one of those things that's sort of risen in prominence through the week that that we'll you know we'll dive in and discuss it in a little while um 
because I think it, it definitely warrants it. And you know, we've seen already seen people put forward their uh, their stuff. But um, man, I've I've had I've had like the opposite week to everyone. I've had the opposite week to everyone because I am at work and gangbusters because. You know, if I stop doing what I do, then no one has power, and I imagine people would be pretty cranky. So, I, I've been doing imagine that. People and, at home in quarantine without power. Oh, people, I mean, be fucking riot. <laughs> there would be more deaths from just boredom and like killing each other than the actual coronavirus, and that sounds really morbid. But I'm not fucking kidding when I say that. It would be yeah. a disaster. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, Rachel's in the same position. She she works at a bank. So she's literally dealing with the general public all day, every day, and it's starting to get to the point where we're going, well, what do we do? Does one of us pull the pin on work and stay at home with the kids because the kids are still in care? Like, So we're, we're the opposite. Everyone else is like cooped up in home and safe, kind of, yeah, you're with no money. We've, we've still got our jobs, so we can't complain, but like, I'm, I'm definitely yeah. not complaining. Please don't think that I am. Um, but I'm starting to feel like, well, fuck, I don't know that I'll, I want to be at work. But, man, what a crazy time to be alive. It's um, even in Australia over the last weird? week. Because it's like, it's like super, this is something to say to Mr. Danny yesterday. It's obviously super serious, but it also doesn't feel like anything's changed, if that makes sense. It's sort of like, <laughs> you know, you go around your normal business, like, you know, I probably yeah. have to go mow the lawns today, but. On the on the backside, of that, it's also the apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the thing is like I got out to fill up my car. I was running low on petrol, and I realised that I didn't have any hand sanitizer on me, and I was going to have to touch like the pump to fucking fill my car up. So I had this like moment of, do I fucking do it, not do it, whatever? And then I found I found a shirt in the back of my car, so I put that on my hand, and then I'm like standing at the petrol station. Pump, filling my car with gas, just looking at everyone that walked past me. He's like, does this dude have it? Does this dude have it? And then I realized that I was basically basically treating everyone with the inherent distrust and suspicion that I have for my whole life anyway. So nothing's really changed for me. It's fucking, maybe I was just prepared for the apocalypse. I don't like people. Don't come near me. Unless, like, you're part of I know you or you're into something I'm into. I don't want to fucking know anything about what you're doing or who you are or whatever. But it's It's weird. <laughs> It's so, it is weird in that sense. Like we were, weird, you yeah. know, like all, all, my whole family's home today. We're out on the back deck having breakfast and, you know, it's a bit like, geez, it's quiet because everyone's inside. <laughs> like, you know, we're lucky. We've got a relatively large block of land and stuff so the kids can get out and run around in the backyard and stuff. Do you, but. Do you think this is what, this is what like, if a, if a real zombie apocalypse happened, this is what it would be like? You would just like acclimatise to it and there'd be like zombies running around. You'd just be like chilling out. <laughs> just like like in your front porch with like just like, yeah, like dead last stuff. episode where there was that big thump on the window except i'd get up and shove a broom through some dead bastard's head <laughs> fuck off i'm trying to do a podcast mate <laughs> <laughs> i i don't know i mean it, it, it's weird in that like i guess the thing that i keep coming back to and this is again probably a little bit heavy to be starting the podcast off on is that like the coronavirus while it's incredibly serious isn't you know, like it's deadly, sure, but it's not particularly deadly. It's not like SARS deadly or fucking, you know, some of the MERS no, I think deadly. It is and more, I think it is. Well, it just depends. It's more like, It's more transmissive than most of those really, really deadly diseases. I, know, I think it doesn't, but, doesn't it not have a higher mortality rate than SARS. I don't think so, man. I, I, matter of fact, I'd know that it doesn't, but it's... Um, oh, I, I, well, I was watching something. Maybe they were talking about the Maybe it's changed. They were graphic. They were graphing it against SARS and it was more, but I don't but, know if that was something else. Yeah, it's um, I don't know. I've been looking at I've been looking at way too much fucking coverage about it, and I think that probably over the next week, I'm going to do my best to stay informed while also like not reading news articles about how fucked we all are because I don't think that's particularly yeah. conducive to me being the friendly man that I not, I would like to be. But yeah. um, yeah, that the thing that I keep coming back to is like this is fucking serious, but it could have been. 10 times as serious if it was an outbreak of something more severe on the same scale. It's like I'm, I'm terrified for, you know, we're lucky. We live in Australia and, you know, it's a first world country with a solid medical system and all that sort of stuff. You look at places like Indonesia yeah. and shit like that where shit's really starting to hit the fan and, um, man, it's case like I'm fucking terrified for those people. I work with a few of them um, sort of, I mean, in my business we deal with, uh, with Indonesia a bit, so... Um, yeah, very, 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 very frightening times across the globe. But 
Um, anyway, <laughs> let's just start the show off on a, a really we, light note. How, how do we pull it back from there? Look, um, I think, you, know, you know what? The, what? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm having a beer. Before. I'm having a beer. I'm, I'm taking advantage of this because I got home yesterday afternoon and I knew for the whole weekend I didn't have to go anywhere, which is not a great position to be in when you like a beer a little bit, like what I do. So I'm like, well, I don't have to drive. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, maybe to the bottle shop, but like, I mean, when, I don't know if it's the same everywhere in the world, but in Australia, bottle shops were deemed an essential service. <laughs> <laughs> like liquor stores, I suppose. <laughs> it's the, yeah. the American equivalent, but... Uh, yeah. it's, our, it's our version of a gun shop. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I'm not getting into any socioeconomic fucking things from over the ditch, but <laughs> look, no, I think... You know, um, you know the way that the, the, the only, not the only good thing, but I guess if we want to bring it back to being a little bit positive, it's sort of we're all in it together. I yeah. was talking to my friend like yesterday because he, 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 he's got like a chain of gyms. He has like seven gyms. I'm like, dude, how the fuck are you going? He's like, you know what? I'm actually feeling all right, man. He lives in New Zealand at the moment because he's got some over there. He's like, New Zealand's killing it. Like, he's looking after us. Oh, We're going to get some, some business stuff. And he's like, um, all, I've just moved all my members to online. We're trying to give them stuff to, to keep their subscriptions going. Um, and he's like, the thing is, all businesses are suffering unless you're selling toilet paper. So, you know. Like, it's or, or news. News is the other one that's gone through the roof because just you know, stocks in every news agency in the world has gone through the roof. But uh, the other thing, though, like on the, on a the, on a similar note, there's a guy that owns a coffee shop over near work, and uh, he's a mate of a guy that I work with. And Kurt, my mate at work, was going in there every day despite everything, just buying coffee. You're like, fuck, I need to try and keep my mate in business, right? Yeah, yeah. But yep. hey, <laughs> mate. Anyway, Thea's in here, so we're just going to do a... Come here. Come here. No, no, no. No, no. All right, she's hiding. She's going to hide behind the chair. Uh, but... <laughs> <laughs> this is very strange. Uh, <laughs> she's in her PJs already. That's the that's the price of not having to go anywhere. You want to come up with Dad? No. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, professional as fuck podcast here. Oh, I just swore in front of her. Yeah. Anyway. Um... <clears throat> <laughs> what was I talking about? Talking about coffee shops. It? I'm rattled. Um, yeah, he, coffee shop. Basically, the guy was there. saying that they pivoted the entire business in the space of a week into delivering coffee to people. So they're just like dead dropping coffee on people's <laughs> doorsteps instead of people coming in. And I think that like there's businesses that will learn and grow out of this in a way that they probably hadn't planned on like that. So, do you, do you know what I realize is all my all my non gaming friends did not invest in internet infrastructure when they bought houses. Yeah. It was fucking, we, oh my God, we tried to do this catch up last night and we were all in, um, it wasn't Zoom, it was another one. It was called House Party or something like that where you can play yeah. games and stuff in there. No one had microphones. No. no everyone's just yelling at their laptop. <laughs> it was all echoing. What? Everyone's internet was just atrocious. And I was like, oh look, my God. Look, you're there. You see you? You're on TV. <laughs> You're famous. Me? All right, go for a mum. Can you go for a mum? No, I'm going to stay oh, here because this is where all the cool stuff is. <laughs> You can be, the, you can, you can be that that. Um, well, that's what I feel like. That was, you know that news dude, the but, guy with the news yeah. cross, where the kid comes. <laughs> <laughs> can, can you, you please teach you to walk can you like this? this? Can you walk funny? No, you've scared her off, Matt. Look what you've done. <laughs> Bye. Um, Bye. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, life goes on. Yeah, we tried to do that last night and I was like, my God, everyone, you all need to invest in microphones and uh, internet. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Please. I mean, that, that's, that's it at the end of the day. Like, we were incredibly well positioned for this because we don't really go outside anyway if we can help it. <laughs> So yeah. we've got, we've got all the stuff in place. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm going to try and look to work from home some next week, and I will be working from in here. But I need to figure out how I can put a camera somewhere else, so I'm not like, hey, I'm fucking <laughs> engineering from the nerd cave. 
<laughs> ah, just embrace it. That's what I do. Yeah, I think just so. I don't it. give a fuck. But there we are. Um, all right. Well, let's play the sting. We'll jump into uh, a bit of Destiny news and uh, a little bit of something else that we've got to cover off on as well. You said something while we were in the sting. What did you say? Or was it not? Yeah, because I can't, I can't hear the sting. <laughs> Well, I need to fucking fix that. <laughs> All right, one one important bit of news we're going to get off uh, before we talk. We dive into talking about uh, too much destiny. Uh, we we spoke about this at the back end of last week's podcast. Is that we've struck up a, sort of a? I mean, we're not sponsored by Steel Series, but we're, we're, collaboration. We're, yeah, it's a collaboration and a partnership with Steel Series. Yeah. Now, yeah. the initial plan for this was to jump in uh, and basically talk about their products, which is you know that's. <laughs> that's part of it that's part of the game but with a view to being able to give away some stuff to someone in our community or the wider destiny community that's doing really cool mm -hmm. shit now um and and that's cool shit in terms of just being a good person right person. i think yeah like like the opposite of me and log yeah just like, like aim, for that. <laughs> aim for that as minimum <laughs> that, that's that's why we're like they're like you guys do not deserve this endorsement <laughs> can you please find someone appropriate to give it to but we you know like through through your show um but what we're gonna do we're gonna we're gonna go through we're gonna we're gonna have a quick look at um the products that we're gonna give away so this is this is what this is so uh this week we've got the apex 5 keyboard we're gonna jump in we're gonna look at the trailer for that and basically, once we do, we're going to do three weeks of it, and then we're going to look at um, certain criteria around who we're going to give it to or who the community wants us to give it to is probably more appropriate. So yeah. given everything that's going on in the world at the moment, we had initially thought, well, we'll just give it to someone who's out there doing something great within the Destiny community. But I don't know. We're, we're kind of thinking that fuck knows where we'll be in three weeks. So if we can look to, you know, help someone out who's fallen on, harder times or something like that, then, then we absolutely will, which yeah, is why yeah, we aren't cool. formally saying this is what you've got to do to earn this shit right now. So yeah. we'll, uh, we'll revisit that in coming weeks and um, we absolutely want to make sure this stuff hits uh, where it needs to. So without further ado, we'll jump into Steel Series little uh, very, very snazzy trailers for this stuff, man. I was very it's impressed. Really, so, I haven't yeah. even seen it. I'm excited. Wow. Come on, man. Come on. Oh, it's muted. <laughs> That's no good. We can't hear So there you go. There's the trailer for the Apex 5. It looks fucking snazzy. It's full of Look. RGB goodness, which is basically everything that you need. <laughs> I, can, I can tell you right now, I hadn't actually hadn't used Steel Series products until now. And I've used lots of different stuff like headsets. I've had Audio Technica, Sennheiser, uh, now Steel Series. Mouse, I've had Logitech, Razer, now Steel Series. Keyboard, I've had Corsair, which is my main one. And then this Steel Series one. And dude, the quality of this stuff is good it is good it is so like, like to be, to be perfectly honest impressed. we we haven't had our hands on the apex 5 keyboard but i've got yeah. the tkl and matt's got the pro so to speak to the yeah. quality of the brand we, we can absolutely feel pretty comfortable doing that but um yeah man the headsets too i've been using mine at work for, for all my conference calls because it's literally the everyone at work's fucking working from home except me at the moment so i'm in there using Stupid that company, like, that's, this, this that's is dumb, man. Artist. So, Wear it yeah. for eight hours a day. Just sit there listening to death metal on the download while I'm in a conference. Yeah. So yeah, it's <laughs> really good. That. It doesn't. Uh, most headsets that I've had um, do eventually get uncomfortable on my ears. Uh, I'll get like red spots on them because I've got little bits of cauliflower ear from wrestling and doing dumb from getting shit. punched in the head. Yeah, getting punched in the head basically. So these don't give it to me, which is great. They don't slip. They don't slip down and rub my ear or anything like that. So. Unreal. It's good. Unreal. So that's that's what the deal is. We're not like pushing this stuff for us. We're pushing it so that we can get some stuff to give yeah. to you guys. And ultimately, whoever it goes to, if you want to help us out by sort of telling us what you think of the gear when you get it, that would be unreal. But as I said, over coming weeks, we'll figure out somewhere where it probably needs to go more than uh, more than anywhere else. But 
Happy days. Happy days. I'm not going to play nice. the sting again because it confused the shit out of Matt, but um, <laughs> let's dive into talking about some Destiny. Um, first thing, the Moon Bunker, mate. Have you been in the Moon Bunker? What did you think of the Moon Bunker? Mate, I've I've been into the Moon bunk, Bunker. Have I? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I've unlocked it and I did like two nodes on, two nodes on it. I did two nodes on it. Yep. I, I, I've got to admit, I have not been motivated to continue this storyline whatsoever i think that and that's the thing that's annoying me about this right now this is a, probably a little bit of a negative spot to jump off from <laughs> i didn't think about that beforehand but i feel very much the same right it's from from the get-go i felt like oh you know like i wasn't i'm super interested in what happens with rasputin in the in the greater context of the story but the second i got in there and realized that it was more or less the sundials again and it was just level them up and, you know, you unlock stuff. Like, don't get me wrong, the stuff that you can unlock, particularly the mods, are cool as fuck. Like I was running through um, doing some strikes with Nick last night and he's unlocked heaps more of it than I have because he's had a, a bit more time to sink into it. You know, the, the war mine cores and all that sort of stuff, blowing up, killing everything in strikes, delightful. Yeah, but that's, that not, sort of that's, stuff, not the, but that's not the – that's not like Rasputin just level up. Like, that's just like, yeah. Is that a season I'm a mod, thing? isn't it? With, with your, your season level up with the Seraph guns, right? Oh, fuck, really? Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Just disregard. I'm pretty, disregard. <laughs> you're not used to me actually playing the game. No, I'm not. I could have just lied and fucking said anything yeah, because, over recent weeks. Yeah, it's not I'm, like anyone else listens I'm to this I'm pretty sure those little war mine cells that drop is like a armor mod that you put on and then when you use the Seraph guns, you get out of your seasonal um, packages. Yeah, right. That's that's what you get. It's like you know, shoot shoot enemies with seraph guns, and it will drop that. And then, um, yeah, I thought it was like a. Complete, I, 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 don't I, know. I honestly, yeah. I honestly didn't really read the level ups in the bunker that much. Um, you know, I just tried to complete it just because it was there to complete. The only thing yep. I really felt that I took note of was when you get the the cheaper upgrade materials, like when you when you upgrade it, so it costs less. Yep. And then when you get the war, the war frames or whatever they are, the super heavy frames and the Valkyrie, and then everything else I didn't really notice, to be honest, but I also didn't pay a huge amount of attention to it. Um, I just don't know the point of leveling them up. I don't understand the carrot for it. I, like after the first one, like, I mean, every Rasputin level, you do get powerful gear or is it pinnacle? No, nah, it's Maybe powerful. it's pinnacle. I don't think it's is pinnacle. Is it just powerful? I think it's just powerful. But then again, I don't fucking know anything so <laughs> chat hell Look, fuck I, um but yeah, yeah like yeah, apparently i'm right apparently i'm right thank you franco apparently there I'm you right. go there you good go. you can come back so but i don't don't you think like it's not really well communicated that kind of stuff yeah you're right because like i mean like I, any, man, anything i've the, learned out of it and obviously I'm, I'm lacking a little bit because i've honestly paid fuck all attention to it because really the only thing i've been worried about this week this season so far is trials is um you know anything that i haven't have learned i've just sort of asked people or whatever like you know our group of mates and stuff that that have yeah. spent time yeah. on it and like i'm not particularly engaged in it i i really want to know what happens with the overarching story of it all because i give a shit about rasputin as a character and like i want to understand how he fits into where we're going you know in our story but the the kind of week to week of it and now the fact that all the bounties have just gone to the moon one and they don't exist in the well, there's a couple of bounties in the in the other one, but you know, like it's it's like they've moved the activity on from the original one. So if you were off for a couple of weeks, stiff shit. It, I don't know. It's just like that that whole thing of like we're listening about the not the no one likes the fear of missing out shit, and then this is kind of just as bad for it as anything. So I guess Telegraph down the line will probably see that start to change with the next lot of content, but I hope. Uh, they, they're clearly not at that point yet with it. Mm. I don't know. I, yeah, just... I don't know. Because, like, I, I'm just trying to think, like, what I, – I, I don't – why do the – why do why level the bunkers up? Is it to get the – is it basically to get the weapon bounties? Because you can't get them until you're a certain level. So you just level Imagine them up so, to get yeah. weapon bounties to grind, grind the weapons. Is that, yep. is that sort of the That's the peak deal? destiny. Do it for the sake of it. <laughs> <laughs> do it for the because you'll get one small thing out of it that may be useful but probably won't be down the line. <laughs> <laughs> I 
That's where, that's I don't where know, man. I don't know. I've, I've I made a my my crit, critical video for Destiny is coming out on Monday morning, straight time, Sunday night, rather than the normal Destiny law. And I sort of go into more narrative feedback, not necessarily gameplay feedback, but yep. obviously there's some overlap. And my main criticism, and one of my main recommendations is this: I'm I'm interested to test this on you and chat to see if you think it's a good idea. And what I said was there's so much resources going into the big releases, your Forsaken, your Shadow Keep, your Taken King, right? Mm -hmm. They're always done really well. They have lots of activities. They have missions, they have story missions. They have a big central villain. Typically um, people are often excited for the plot and the narrative arc, and then they just let it fizzle out. So it's like yeah. Shadow Keep did some really cool stuff. Uh, everyone was excited for pyramid ships and then we get nothing like what why i i would be fine with there being a 12 month story arc right shadow king yeah. comes out fuck yeah i think that's what people actually the, want the, man the, the pyramid ships is the villain right and so we have to prepare rasputin right the seraph towers for the pyramid ships, not for the old body that's been put on all autopilot. It's going to crash into the planet. Like, don't worry about that. Like, yeah. relate relate all the mini the mini uh, releases to the we, main. We need one. to get power up Rasputin because he's willing to help us against the pyramid ships, and it all of a sudden becomes far more engaging. Yes, and right. Important. So that would that would be yeah exactly. Rather that than would be someone one just trying to yeah. ghost your car into our planet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's, that's more or less what this is. Yeah. I, no, I and then, agree. like, your I next agree. season, right, you, you just have to add something else. So, like, I gave an example, like, okay, well, let's say the Pyramid Ship Armada is coming and it's still progressing throughout the year. All right, now we've got a whole bunch of Guardians that have jumped ship and are like, yeah, Dredge and Yule was right. We're the Dark Guardians now. Now we've got, like, a cultist that we've got to remove. And that's, like, another season. And then the final one before you get to the 12 month is your, your Pyramid Ships actually arrive. You have a raid. you got to get onto the Mothership. You know, you got to fight whatever darkness is on there. And then, boom, you're onto your next release. You're onto the next narrative yeah, arc. Yeah, it's like the closeout. And you then know, the next big release introduces fucking Sabbath Moon comes back or some shit. You and know, if like, you want, you know, you can have the master story behind all of that, you know, because the Pyramid Ships really should have been the master arc story that, you know, this master story that's through everything and it's only resolved when Destiny finishes. And then, Every major release has like a, a major arc, but it's not like the master story, do you know? Yeah, so it's like a tile that ultimately paints the the full picture in the end. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of weird because yeah. really the pyramid ship narrative has just been totally put. It's it's in quarantine. <laughs> it's, in, <laughs> it's in self isolation under the moon, just chilling out, trying not to get the rona. So <laughs> anyway, so I'm hoping this video will help. Uh, a number of things because we can talk about this. We we did get an opportunity to meet with uh, Deej and um, some people from Bungie to, to give feedback. So one thing I'm hoping is doing these kind of uh, videos will be a really great way for me to collect feedback. So if you disagree with something, make sure you let me know. If you agree with something, make sure you let me know. Um, so that would be a way that I can collect information from the community, uh, specifically probably more around narrative because I think that's... Um, dude, I've been making videos on Destiny for like... I just thought about this. Like, didn't did Destiny One come out in 2014? Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. six years, man. Yeah. So like, <laughs> that's fucking crazy. <laughs> are you gonna have years, like a? Are you gonna be? We need to buy you a serious bottle of scotch or you drink rum. So oh. a serious bottle of rum to crack open at the the 10 year anniversary of sp spending your life talking about Destiny. Destiny. <laughs> It has its ups and its downs, but it what a does. life, hey? At least you get yeah, to stay well, home. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, uh, look, that, that was the intention of this. And, you know, I've actually always stayed away from critical videos just because um, the way the channel was. I just I like people coming and being able to relax. And if you make something quite critical, people don't get that, that hit of, just chilling out but I, I think it's important and i sort of wish i had done it throughout the uh years i think i think as long as you're upfront about like the content of the video and you're not sensationalist about it all 
Like, that's not you. And I know that it's not really a risk for you to be like, Bungie's <laughs> <Yeah>. shit. <laughs> <laughs> Why Bungie made this wrong? <laughs> Fucking, you know, like, of the word thing is trash. I could yeah. do better. I could I do have better. Zero experience in game development, but I could do better. I know everything. I'm a content creator. <laughs> Shots fired from Milan Games, not me, please. Uh, but uh, I don't know. I mean, I see a lot of that shit around, and for the most part, I fucking ignore it because I just bleh, whatever. But we've always been of the of the thing that you know, like we've we've been around doing this shit long enough that we're allowed to be fucking critical of something as long as we either suggest an improvement or balance it out with something that we think's going right. So I think. Um, yeah. You know, we're we're at the point now where this we we we've, we've seen enough of this kind of new annual pass model, the quarterly annual passes, rather than the whatever it was thirds of the year last time around with Drifter and Black Armory and Menagerie and whatever. So, uh, I mean, this one, admittedly, aside from trials, it felt really quite light. And whether that was by design or, or what, fair enough. I don't know. And I'm sure that in the fullness of time, we'll get more feedback and more honesty around, well, not, I, can't, I shouldn't say more honesty, that's probably not the right word, but more transparency around the decisions made around this DLC from Bungie. But yeah. time will tell. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think that's like my other bit of feedback was, I think we all understand this is the model now, right? And yeah. I just think, I think it's a really difficult task for the story team, narrative team, to work with the tools they've got. Because you know the only thing they're going to have each season is like two activities, right? We've got a public event and basically lost sectors with the new skin, mm-hmm. um, one cutscene, and bounties. How the how are you meant to tell a story with that? And maybe they've like done every they've a done few everything in-game they lines can. of dialogue, really. Like when you bump into Anna when yeah. she, after the the first yeah. time you clear the, the you know, the, yeah, yeah. That's not a lot to go so on. So rather than start a new story continue the momentum of the big ones that's my main that's my main feedback i think it's a solid i agree i mean you and i don't don't disagree on much anyway Uh, i very much agree on that front all right let's bring it back to uh the one thing i'm better at you at and that's uh trials so (laughs) i need to out myself because i'm kind of you've got a lot you've got a lot better at pvp a lot i put a lot of work into it you put you put the time into it and it shows to be honest. Um I did first week of trials I didn't I didn't go to the lighthouse, but this week I did. On a warlock, there are eight games ever that I have played on that warlock, and seven of them are the trials victories that got me to the lighthouse. <laughs> so I can there's two takeaways I can. Like one, I'm never going to be a warlock, so don't even bother writing that in the comments of this YouTube video because there's always the warlock people out there that are just waiting for the like, just trying to convert people to their little fucking cult. That will not happen. <laughs> but it was just honestly, it was one of those runs where everything went our way. Except for one game. We had like we're on our our we're on six wins. We bumped into um some guys who we we had a really, really tight match with. And then we played them again, I think the second time and beat them. So that was it in the lighthouse. And now I've got like warlock armor, <laughs> warlock trials armor that I'll never use. But um, it was, I, I was initially started out going in just because I wanted to, to get another roll on the shotgun. So I guess that's the thing is that like I went in with no real goals and managed to fluke it. Admittedly, like I was playing with Nick and Max and they're incredibly good players, but um, I held my own, I think, and and that maybe that's it. But the other thing that maybe we that's did, where I'm going wrong. I just get sassy to help me out. <laughs> I, oh, wait, honestly, did you play with Sass today? Yeah. This is more Sassy's map than than a normally was because Sass will. Oh, play. he was he was fragging out. He was getting ten kills yeah. every time. Me and Adrian had about zero. Yeah, there's <laughs> just <laughs> solid <Okay>. duck eggs. <laughs> 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 Quack. Um. But I mean, the other thing that we've done since since last week's podcast was me, you, and Adrian ran with a couple of cards, and we were getting up to like yeah, five wins and stuff. And I think that was a pretty positive yeah. thing in that um, we were able to kind of go through and you know I was calling shots a bit, which is not historically something I've done because I'm normally the you know the the really average player in amongst the the sassies of the world. So I think it was a something that I'd like to do more and and kind of I think, yeah, I think we so. all it's need to learn that. Yeah, I think it's actually interesting doing that. Like 
to be honest, I think me and Adrian played better with you just because, or maybe it just appears better because people are still alive for us to shoot. So <laughs> there could be a bit of, there there is that a bit of bias there. Uh, but, dude. um, and you obviously feel like you contribute more. So actually I'm probably just, maybe no. we play the same, but you feel like you do better. There was when more you're endorphin hits, so that, <laughs> Yeah. When you're with people that are your similar level, do you know? Yeah, so, I, th- I think that's part of it, but I-, I don't know. Like, for me, I'm enjoying it. I'm still having a good time with it. You do just occasionally get your fucking teeth kicked in and there's nothing you can do about it because there are God squads running yeah. around. But probably the biggest issue with it is that the whole token farming thing has raised a real, real yeah, nasty right. problem of people basically playing the the first three wins after they've, you know, they've done their flawless, they've kicked it off, they don't have anything else to particularly strive for except tokens to try and get rolls on the weapons that are available, yeah, right? right? And then they're playing their first three games, and irrespective of whether they win them, lose them, whatever, they're dumping the card and getting a new one just so they can match against people in the first three games of their card, which for mine is probably something that I think Bungie overlooked in this setup of the new trials because so it's do, do you get more tokens after the third win or is it just the first three no, games are going to be easier it's just the first three is games that... are going to be easier because they're matched against people at the front of the car right so you so that's you, why they do it really you know right. they can they can be there's, there's people that could comfortably be going to six seven lighthouse games right like every time so they, they really play. just need to increase how many tokens you get as you yeah. progress in your card i think so i mean it's it's there is a, a passage a, a passage type that you can get that drops more tokens, but even that, it doesn't scale the further you get through. So there's no real incentive to go beyond those three games when you can just farm just, you know, like Joe Blow turns it's up like with me. his mates. Yeah, farm us, really. Like that's the, that's, that's the crux of it. But it's like honestly, some of the sweatiest games we played on Monday night were the front First three front games. three games. And once you get past that, if you can get it's like this baptism of fire. <laughs> if you can manage to <laughs> luck your way through it, then it was sort of like, okay, well we didn't play anyone that was super, super difficult beyond that. It was yeah, we all our games were so crazy hard. And then we had one that was just like evenly matched. It wasn't and then we're like, oh, where's this game been for yeah, fucking no. the last four hours? <laughs> it's fucking crazy. Four hours. Like these guys, and you can tell, you can tell pretty quickly whether people are on your level or not because it's just, you feel yeah. absolutely steamrolled. So what I would say to people who are in jumping into into trials right now um, and who are getting abs, because last Monday, not this Monday just gone, but the Monday before we jumped on and I think you, I and Nick were playing, Maddie, maybe if I'm remembering correctly, and we were getting absolutely fucking pub stomped like just mauled every game. Oh, yeah, 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 and it was, yeah. I was like, what the fuck? And I walked away, I walked away from that totally demoralized of like, what the fuck am I going to do with myself? Because I'm shit at destiny and always will be. But oh, I, I felt like that today. I felt <laughs> like have those, that you have today. those days and you have those days, but it was kind of like that, you know, I didn't, it was too soon to really recognize that that's what was happening, that people were farming the tokens through that, those first three games. I think that it's something they're going to have to address and they're going to have to address it sooner rather than later. But if you are out there just kicking in, just trying to have a good game and whatever, and I know that it sucks that you don't get the rewards, but just stick with it and and just it doesn't feel nice to get your ass kicked, but eventually you're going to get someone on your level and you'll get a good game out of it. And it's going to make it incredibly hard for people who aren't absolute monsters to to get their win streaks up enough to be getting the loot. But... Uh, and you know the interesting thing is, something. I also I, I don't really blame people for farming it either. Like this is like the no, what no, PV, no. what PVP people have been waiting for. It's it sort of sucks to be like we we did get matched with the same people quite often today, and it, it sort of sucks to be in that spot. But I also don't blame. I'm like, well, you know, that's your version of doing lost sectors. Like I'm not yeah. angry at all about that. That it, it, this needs to be like a, a bungee change, really. This needs to be bungee. Yeah, it's changing a systemic something. thing. So, it's a systemic thing. I mean, yeah, you could say just play your card out, like if you if you're just going to do that. And really, you know, there's three games that are in that part of the card anyway, and then four that aren't. If they're going for the lighthouse every time or looking to get that, so they're still going to be if if they're running trials card after trials card just under half the time they're going to be sitting in that bracket anyway. But I just think that they've got to figure out a way that like 
you know, either either the token scale so you get more for every win or something. I don't know. I'll put a tweet out about it. I can't even remember what it was. But, uh, you know, I think that's that's the way. We're going we're gonna to double down on a way to invest people in it without abusing the fucking first three games of the card. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know what? I, I did have that moment. I was like, I'm never going to get better at Destiny. I need to fine, not dude. do this anymore. And like... <laughs> But I just I am amazed at how people how good people are at this game. And I thought, you know what? I guess it's like I've been focusing on the law for six years, maybe the last four weeks. <laughs> yeah. You you put a I'm month into it. It would be a Imagine bit presumptuous. If I put six years into it. It would be a bit presumptuous to expect that you can just come in and <laughs> kick the shit out of people who've been playing nothing but PvP for five years. <laughs> I was surprised I got Revoker though, to be honest. No, like, I, you know, dude, you uh, you yeah, you're more than capable of that. Especially I, the way comp works. Started, like you though, play, you play like... against people more or less at your school rating. Yeah. So yeah. you can definitely, you can definitely jump. And that, that's the other thing too is I'd encourage people who are having a hard time in trials. If you're going in there consistently getting stomped, go and play comp because it <laughs> once you, once you've spent a considerable amount of time in trials for whatever reason, going back to comp almost seems fucking relaxing because <laughs> it's not like Dude. one mistake and you're fucked, you get a few chances. And we've literally been playing comp to chill out after trials cards. Yes. And just yes. having a great time with it. And it, you know, it is what it is. Obviously I'm you still want your wins. But... In comp. Yeah. I'm actually having heaps of fun. I actually had a wicked game of comp after trials, after just getting smacked in trials. And then I went to comp and it's like everyone's moving in slow motion. Do you know? Yeah. Everyone's not masterwork to max fucking <laughs> max max <laughs> just fucking tens of ten stacks on everything, hundred stats on everything. I mean that's not that real, <laughs> but that's what it feels like sometimes. But dude, I, I've I've spent a bit of time just watching other people play and figuring out how I can you know, like I haven't shotgunned for fucking forever. And that was how basically we went to the lighthouse the other night. It was just real playing super aggressive. Not not my own sort of play style. I've always been of that. I guess it's probably because it's the way Sass has taught me, but to play for a pit, play off a pick more or less. So try and get a snipe and then and then close it out from there. But it was fun, and because we didn't give a shit, I think that really just you know like I didn't want anything other than three wins, and I got seven. So I'd embrace if you can jumping in and not worrying about the results, just going in and yeah. playing because you'll get heaps further along yeah, I do rather than stressing. Yeah. If you stress about your card, you're gonna have a fucking shit time because. Like, who yeah. needs more stress right now? <laughs> anyway, there's enough shit going on to worry about. Don't worry about trials. No, you know what? I haven't lost my job and I work from home. I need the most stress <laughs> I possibly can get. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So beyond that, there's uh, there's been a few changes to the world drops um, where uh, Season of the Dawn mod slots have been added to the Dead End Cure, Retrograde TG2, Hyro Camo, Road Complex AA1, Devastation Complex, and High Minded Complex armor sets. And um, Season of the Undying mods have been added to the Red Moon Phantom, Mimetic Saviour, Thorium Halt, Tangled Web, Prodigal. Prodigal, yeah, Prodigal. Prodigal's the best one. Prodigal Titan, Prodigal yeah. Helm. If you're not wearing that, you're a mug. Uh, Frumius, Noble Constant Type 2, Ego Talon 4, Errant Knight, Kerak Type 2, and Philomath. So they've basically gone through and, you know, that was feedback from, I think I think it was last season where it kind of sucked that we didn't have the seasonal mod slots for these armor pieces. But um, good to see them going through and changing them to, to make them relevant more or less. So... Other than that, there's, there's not a whole heap in the twelve. It's a, uh, I don't want to say it's a classic work from home twelve, but it's starting to feel like that. <laughs> I don't want to call DMG out, but uh, you know, it's pretty. I don't know. Maybe there's just genuinely not that much to talk about. There's also uh, another set of Twitch Prime rewards. So a couple of. Oh, how do I uh, do this? I need to do this. I need to do this Twitch Prime thing. You got Twitch Prime? Yeah, I think so. You just oh, link it to your now. Destiny account. It'll tell you. It'll tell you right now. Just follow the thing in the top. Um, okay, so the, you can get the Prometheus lens. Um, <laughs> you can get the Eye of Osiris weapon, exotic weapon ornament, uh, Tyrant Shell, and Fleet Scar 9, which is a ship, just a legendary, sh a pretty unremarkable ship, if I'm honest. I don't mean to be, don't mean to be a prick, but, I mean, tell me what you reckon. Pretty, <laughs> it's just a... 
<laughs> it looks like it could have been a transformer at some point and then it just lost the ability to transform and now it's a ship in destiny so unlucky fleet scar nine you're boring um but beyond that um all right, well, look, what we might do, we're, we're run out of Destiny things to talk about. So if you're rocking on in chat uh, and you've got anything you want to you hit me and Maddie with, um, please fire away, whether it's, um, you know, Destiny related or not, please don't ask us for medical advice. We will give you an answer. It will not be appropriate. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, yeah. So well, honestly, Matt, just to... Just to um, finish off on on the your video we know we've been doing a bit of a recap of, of that sort of stuff of late so what else have you got in there what's another another choice tidbit? okay so i i i put uh the feedback into three categories uh story delivery and world uh story talked about um the narrative itself so one of the big um issues was story resolution which is what i just talked about was having to resolve stories the other main point in my story category was I don't think the almighty was threatening. I don't think players felt threatened by the almighty. I don't think there was enough background for people to feel like this was a legitimate threat and to reenact Rasputin, you know, after the Warmind, it didn't like the action didn't quite seem relevant for the, the um, event that was taking place. Like, yeah, I yeah. think a lot of people just thought we have spaceships, like let's just push it up. We have space magic. Like just that we are immortal. Just go fly next to it, and we'll get a warlock to Nova bomb, and then we'll bring him back and suck him back into the ship. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, yeah, why can't just, like every fucking warlock go and throw a Nova bomb at it at once? Surely that. Yeah, would like like a whole bunch of times on the side of it. You just do your your super everyone, Superman punch, and you can just push it off course. <laughs> everyone like, ballistic you know I mean? slam the Almighty off course. <laughs> Yeah. So I don't think uh, that was my first thing. I, I don't feel like um, there was enough set up and to, to make the almighty feel threatening. And I, um, and, and I think they needed to resolve some storylines and introduce some new ones as well. So uh, that was that my, my, my summary of, of season of the worthy in layman's terms was it was like your favorite anime, but for Christ's sake, Goku throw the fucking spirit bomb. It was okay. <laughs> I enjoyed it because it was Dragon Ball Z. But can you get to the fucking point? <laughs> that was point that. number one. Um, uh, what did I say? Delivery. I, I gave some feedback on how the how the stuff's delivered, and it, most of that was around bounties. I felt like the bounties were not related to uh, the story. I don't think uh, you know collecting orbs to prove you're worth the Rasputin really encourages much motivation i think the bounty should have been linked to the activity so if we felt threatened by the by you know the almighty and then you had bounties that were like you need to you need to activate Rasputin's defenses i think that would have been more congruent and got you sort of involved in the story a little bit more yep. um the web law was amazing i i think there needs to be a web law category in game so people can read it if you're not on twitter and you're not doing that stuff I think you need to give it be given an opportunity to see it in game at the same time i think uh we need to get back to what we had in d1 with a page that you can go and read everything on bungie's website so on your lunch breaks you can read grimble cards law entries uh, web law because as someone like me who has to go back and look at previous seasons like when i write a video that shit is really hard to find so like okay let's just say in six months time if you want to remember what happened in the web law for season of worthy, it is really hard to find it. You either mm. manually got to go through the website or you hope that when you Google search it, it's Bungie's link that comes up first and you can see the web law. But if you don't remember the title of the web law, you're not going to find it. You like, you can't just be like season of the Worthy web law. You just won't find it. You got to be like, okay, it was called remembrance. So I'm going to go look through my notes and hopefully I've like referenced yeah. what the web law is called. So I think there could be better delivery options for the web law. Yep. And um, the world, uh, this was my feedback about a player interaction with the world. I think um, we don't always feel like we're impacting it. We're, we're definitely seeing 
things change in the world, but it just feels like it changes around us rather than us impacting it. Like, yeah, I think I think that's always like, going to be a difficult thing in terms of yeah. um, like in, in a game of such scope where you go to the tower and there's fucking 900 people in there that are all on their own fucking journey, yet you're the one. <laughs> you know, like it's 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 always going to be a double edged sword in that respect. But yeah, well, def- I mean, definitely. So, so f- uh, my my way my th- my bit of feedback for season of worthy we need to see the almighty approaching earth and rasputin's defenses fucking it up right yeah. that is the impact of the player yep yeah. yeah. if we don't see that it, it like we need to see the the impact of of what we've been doing Yep. If you're setting up these defenses of Rasputin, we need to see the Almighty get blown to smithereens by some cool Rasputin space gun. Well, we, I don't know. I mean, do you think it's heading to a point where we're going to go back on the Almighty? Because that is like a thing in the game. We've done that. You know, like, do you think that's ultimately where this ends, that we go back on the Almighty and <laughs> blow it up or fuck it off? Or I don't know. Or does oh, just Rasputin yeah. go, thanks for doing all them bounties. I'm good to go now. Fump and fucking shoots it. Or I, I don't know. I'd be, I'd be a little uh, underwhelmed if at least, if at some point we, we don't go back there and, and do that and at least be on there for a mission. There's some mission at the back end of this season that's go in and, I don't know, change something or do, I don't know. This is why I'm not in narrative. No, the thing is, if that wouldn't make sense though. Like if if we if we go on there, if we go back onto the Almighty, well then everyone will say, Well, why didn't you do that in the fucking first place? Zavala was already on there with Anna Bray. It's true. I mean, either they that killed or, everyone or we're just gonna be Almighty. Yeah, they just killed everyone. <laughs> that was all they did. They were like, I don't know, I'm not a tech guy, and just got back off and came home and cried about it. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It'll be, <laughs> yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it fucking how it resolves itself. So yeah, all right. We'll jump into a few a few little comments and questions and whatnot. Pike Place says, "What's up with all the Siva ornaments?" It's very interesting. I'm not sure if it's like alluding to anything or if it's just kind of like this is the best opportunity given that it's Siva was kind of tied in with Rasputin. I don't know. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I heard there's leaks. Everyone keeps banging on about fell winter leaks. Don't tell me. I haven't read it yet. I haven't seen it yet. I'm not going to read leaks. I'm not going to talk about leaks. Yeah, we've like done I've, that. Yeah. And we've been there before, guys. We've done stuff. We've made writers angry. We've made writers upset. We've disrespected work by by data mining stuff and posting leaks. I think it's completely fine if you want to go spoil spoil the story for yourself. That's that's. I'm, I have no issue with that, but. Uh, I do have issue with me making a video about it and spoiling it for thousands of people. Yeah, I do totally agree. I, I kind of get annoyed with that that whole culture, but I guess there are people who do want these things spoiled for them. Fuck knows why, but, you know, like <laughs> it makes for a pretty dry season when you already know what's coming up, eh? <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, Sourcemore asks, what's everyone's favourite drink and snack? <laughs> maybe maybe snack nah snake we've all got to have a fucking favorite type well, of snake uh, probably cobra cobra will be my favorite snack i'm gonna go Just with because, um you know, uh isn't that from spitting Dodgeball? the cobras you like the <laughs> you're spitting cobra is that what you're, you're about the spitting cobra yeah um house of snack <laughs> <laughs> And there we go. We've brought it full circle. That's the end of the podcast. Goodbye. (laughs) (laughs) It was a month in the setup, but. (laughs) Uh, And what was the first question? Favorite drink? Uh, What's your favorite drink? Hey? Like alcoholic drink or just normal drink? I mean, it just says drink. So, I mean, we assume that's alcohol, but I imagine normal people. Yeah, we do assume that's alcohol. I drink a lot of, um, Danny makes um, some homemade ginger beer. Uh, non-alcoholic, so I put that with some Captain Morgan. It's delicious. Or <laughs> it's non-alcoholic, recently. so I put it with some alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Not worth yeah, drinking. I don't drink anything without booze in it. Fuck it. <laughs> but if I'm feeling like I want to treat myself, you know those like. Not indie brands, but like it's not Coke. It's like cola, and it'd be like we've got one down here that's you know like made in Margaret River or some shit like that. Oh yeah, you know? right. Like RC uh, Cola know, or whatever. What's it called? 
<laughs> What's the brand? Yeah. Tell me what the brand is. Is it a shit brand? What's the brand name? I don't know. I can't remember. But, you know, it's just like a indie version of cola. Sometimes I like them. They're good. It's, it's like having a Coke, but it's not Coke, you know? Fair enough. Okay. It's just a bit weird. <laughs> weird cola for a chance. Weird cola, yeah. I don't think I, yeah, I avoid things with cola written on them. I'm just, I'm a Coke bitch. <laughs> just to stay on that. Um, right, so favourite snake, definitely red belly black snake because they fuck off the other, the brown snakes. We've got brown snakes pretty bad around here, so uh, we get out of that. We uh, we get the brown, the red bellies, they fuck them off. Um, and just beer in general. Just beer in general is probably my favourite drink. Such a man, beer. Yeah, just beer. beers, mate. Um yeah, so that, that answers that. Right, okay. Um, what if they changed the skybox of Earth on the tower so we could see the thing crashing? Do you think it would add any urgency to the season? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, fuck. <laughs> All right. Like what I did with the Leviathan, yeah. yeah. But that, that would be like, that'd be like that Austin Powers scene with the, with the steamrollers going hell slow. And he's like, get out the way. And it's just slowly going. It's like, how if we can see it, and it's space traveling from Mercury. Like by the time we see it, it's too late, right? Like yeah, almost certainly. <laughs> I mean, how big is it? I suppose <laughs> if it's planet size, then yeah, well, I understand. Um, <laughs> all right, Ty Drenas says. So, do you think we need a D three or D two transition into a Destiny MMO with continuing the story and adding more elements from D one? That is a very very large question. Um, personally. I would like to see us move to like a final version of Destiny. I hope they don't call just it Destiny. Destiny. Just I hope they don't call it Destiny Three. I hope that it's Destiny something Des- else. Destiny. Just Destiny again, maybe. Happy enough with that. Um, Destiny Online. <laughs> Destiny Online. <laughs> Destiny the game. The game. <laughs> <laughs> Double oh, cool. Destiny. But I do think that like there are. <laughs> I mean, even if you look at the strides that have been made with the infrastructure of the game, even in recent times, you know, like basically the week trials came out, we had the Steam um, service, Steam client update so that people could no longer see your IP and stuff while you're playing, on PC at least. So I think there's definitely systemic things that would be improved if they either spent considerable time upgrading the engine and, like, make no mistake, the engine that Destiny 2 is built on was created before I had kids. (laughs) So, and I've got like a 10-year-old now, so it's it's fairly old. So I think that, I mean, maybe it is time to, to really double down on, I would like to see it, I guess, move to a model that was more sustainable. And I think that Destiny being on such an old engine, I don't know this sort of stuff. I'm just speculating on things, judging on the, the information that I've I've got. But that maybe it's so hard to up to date because it is so old. And if they look to something that's a bit quicker, then maybe it'll be it'll be better for Destiny to be based on that to go forward in its final version, see out its decade long franchise life. Um, Matt has his bottle of fucking <laughs> rum at the end of it all. Ten years of Destiny lore, drinks his rum, and then happy days for everyone. I think that's that's what I'd like no, to see. Spiral into depression as all my subscribers. <laughs> leave. What do I do now? I don't know. <laughs> come out of self quarantine. <laughs> hey, uh, Mr. Barrett, are you making another game that will have law books, please? <laughs> Some more law. <laughs> please, can you please make another game that's uber confusing story wise that requires a channel to that's, explain it? You know what? That's the other. That's the other thing that like we have not seen anything of is that the the other game that they've that that Netta yeah. is bought into them for to make. Like, I wonder what that is. Honestly, I'm just curious. If it's a mobile game, I will cry, though. I'm just saying that. Like actual weep tears. <laughs> Probably on the podcast. Just What if it's a really good mobile game? It, <laughs> like you're yet, I'm yet to be convinced by any mobile game at any point ever. <laughs> so I'm just going to throw that out there. Uh, like mobiles would need to get seriously better for me to start taking mobile gaming seriously. And that's not shitting on anyone who enjoys that stuff. That's just, it's not for me. So there's that. Yeah. What do you reckon? Move to, Uh, move to another version, final version. Oh yeah. I I definitely wanted to just be destiny and like any other MMO, basically just persistent ongoing until they release something else. (laughs) 
All right, Frano, this, this might be the final question. It'll probably be a little bit of a short episode, but I feel like this is... <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the question to end all questions with destiny. Sticky Frano asks, Mylan Games and Log Power Slave, do you want it to end? <laughs> <laughs> um I mean, uh, I look, don't know. <laughs> as as a fan, I would love for Destiny to have a proper ending. To Yeah, to resolve. finish an arc. Yeah. To wrap everything up in a nice, neat bundle and for everyone to walk away and go, you know what, we've had the ups and downs. My, by golly, it ended on a high. Um, I would love for that to happen. I imagine what will probably happen is they'll, they'll keep, they'll get the, I, I imagine they're setting up this model now that can be maintained and can continue moving forward with less and less people so they can work on other games and eventually it will just go into maintenance, I guess. That'd be sad like, uh, if, if that's the way it, like, it just fizzles out. Like, I, I'm, a, I'm with your, like, I'm, I'm with you then. If that's, if they're the two options, if it kind of just continues along, along until it just peters out and then, you know, like goes out with a whimper, nah. I'd rather it come to like a fucking crashing absolute crescendo right at the end and then literally yeah. be like waking up the next day bummed out going well what am I going to talk about on a podcast now I'm going to need to fucking think up something else to do with my Saturday afternoons <laughs> oh, the name of the podcast is a bit short so I don't <laughs> test it down on oh, <laughs> maybe we'll go into reading <laughs> fucking tarot cards <laughs> uh, don't oh. know man I don't know um <laughs> Obviously, as a YouTuber, no, well, as a YouTuber, I don't know. I mean, obviously, Destiny's been good to me. That's how I built my channel and all that kind of stuff. But, um, and you know, nothing's come close to touching it in regards to a game that's gone this long that has this detailed lore. It's, I mean, there are franchises that have it, but not not new ones. Like, you know, you've got your Elder Scrolls and stuff like that, uh, and your Warhammer and your World of Warcraft. But, you know, Destiny is probably the latest game in my mind that's had this level. Maybe Warframe. When did Warframe come out? That was before Destiny, right? I'm not sure. Honestly, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, like I, I wouldn't want Destiny to 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 fizzle out. I guess that's what I'm. That'd be my my fucking tackle <laughs> yeah. down under. I don't think. <laughs> I don't think Matt, me and Matt could handle that. Like our relationship, which is, <laughs> which is we'd end up fucking killing each other. <laughs> I've seen Matt when he plays Tarkov. He has that like little bit of the crazy eyes, but not enough for everyone to be <laughs> shit scared of him Safe. watching him stream it. You know, like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I would love for you to play that game one time. I That'd will. I will. You know, one day I will. I actually, and like because we're in the back end of the podcast, I'll I'll talk about this sort of shit. I downloaded Warzone through the week. I haven't had a chance to play it yet, but just. For, for the yeah, sake right. of, like, I was honestly anticipating that I'd be in fucking lockdown by the end of the week and that maybe the internet would go to shit because everyone was on it. So I'm like, fuck, I better get in and download that early before, <laughs> before all the fucking kids are stuck at home ruin it for me. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I'll probably probably look to give that a go at some point just for the sake of something different. I haven't played a oh, COD. I wouldn't mind doing that. Yeah, yeah I, I haven't played a COD game, I think, since... Maybe I've played one since Destiny's come out and I played through the story and was like, I have no interest in this and <laughs> straight back to Destiny. So it'll be interesting. But I'm, I'd hate to see Destiny fall into that model too where like CODs these days are kind of like fucking completely disposable. You know, like they're like fast food gaming where one comes out every year. <laughs> and like no one can oh, even really man. clearly remember what was in what game anymore fucking five years down the line. So I wouldn't. I, I hope they go down like the World of Warcraft path where they just keep making content, hopefully, and yeah. there's enough people playing it and paying for it that, yeah, that it's, it's self-sustaining yeah. and they don't take staff from Destiny to build something else and they remain on, on you know, Destiny and they have enough money coming in that they use that to start other franchises and get additional people you know yeah i i totally agree i totally agree right i'm gonna quickly have a scan and see if there's any real crushing questions that we need to answer i, uh, rede I redeemed my twitch twitch prime by the way it's, oh, that, easy it's it that easy you can do it while hosting a podcast 
<laughs> there you go. You can go and just do it up. straight up. <laughs> Do it. You can go back and try and, uh, you know, like watch Matt go through the process of that while talking on a podcast. It must be fucking easy because I can't do anything other than talk and do this. So I get to get hung up. Um, so, all right, one, one last thing. The um, uh, Matt, do you have the Twitch extension for trials? We haven't really spoken about that, the trials. Oh, yeah, I forgot to. Um, I mean, it's, mine's pretty easy. Just assume I'm on zero. <laughs> Matt just makes his own. It never moves. It's just a still image on the screen. Someone will be like, uh, excuse me, I think, your, I think your trial's extension is broken. No, 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 no just not. lose the first game, reset. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Every game. Um, <laughs> but I, I like that. I, it's, you know, it's a bit of, bit of fun engagement. I haven't, you know, like I don't, I don't, you don't put much, much stock in it, but being able to check people's stuff out and, and whatnot, it kind of sucks for, for Richard a little bit in that like he already started developing this kind of stuff. Lowly Dev had started developing this sort of stuff like a, um, a Twitch plugin uh, on, the, on the ass side, but, you know, this is what it is. This is what it is. Yep. It's, it's progress. It's something cool and it's another engagement tool, which, which is really what matters. So, yeah, that's that. All right, yeah. well. I think yeah. we've talked ourselves to a standstill. Um, what we what we'll ask of you this week going forward is to stay the fuck at home, just <laughs> just if you can. Yeah. Just for the for the interceding week between now and when we see you next, stay the fuck at home. Don't go anywhere if you don't have to. Don't high five anyone. Don't fucking talk to strangers. Just stay at home in your track pants and do nothing. That's literally that is isn't isn't it crazy that our generation could literally save the world by staying the fuck at home and doing nothing? I saw this I saw this <laughs> hella funny meme. It was like thirty year old man just laying on the couch. It was like two thousand nineteen lazy shit, two thousand twenty responsible. It was just the same photo. <laughs> twenty twenty hero. You know, grandparents <laughs> fought wars. We're just getting told to stay inside and not be a moron, and that's our fucking <laughs> contribution to <laughs> and society. We still, and we still, and people still, still fuck it up. up. That was the other one that I that I uh, I saw was um, people <laughs> packed onto a beach in fucking Victoria in Melbourne and like Melbourne beaches are fucking shit anyway. So what are you doing? What are you doing with yourselves? Why are you fucking worrying about what's going on with the beach? Bloody go home. Um, all right. So cheers for tuning in. We'll uh, we'll catch you next week, Maddie. Where where is the law likely to find people this week? I mean, it's got to be at home, right? <laughs> Somewhere around the house. <laughs> Go into your bedroom, check under your mattress. There's a ton of law there. And if you read the first page of the very first law book, you open it up, fresh, crisp law. First line says, stay the fuck at home. <laughs> stay the fuck at home. <laughs> Second page, the end. <laughs> Put it back under the mattress. <laughs> Put it away and go to bed. All right. Cheers. We'll see you next week. Bye. Stand by for a raid. Bye. <laughs>